I was just hanging out with Rogan yesterday, Joe Rogan, and uh, you know, I mentioned to him that as me being a fan of his show, that I would love for him to talk with you. And he said, uh, he's up for it. Any reason you guys haven't done it already? I don't know. I would, I, there's no, I've only met Rogan once and I, and I liked him. I met him at the UFC in <laughs> New York. He was with right. somebody at, we, a mutual friend of ours. And uh, I, you know, Rogan changed media. I mean, maybe more than anybody. And he did it. What I love about, what I admire about Rogan without knowing him beyond meeting him that one time. I mean, I'm still in media, but I've always been in media. You know, it's like not a great surprise. I'm doing what I've always done, just a different format. But Rogan, like, he's got one of those resumes that I admire. You know, I like the guy who was like, I was a longshoreman. I was a short order cook. I was an astrophysicist. I was, you know what I mean? It's like, he's called a man of parts. And this guy was a, a fighter, a stand up comic. He hosted some, you know, fear factor. And like, how did he wind up at the vanguard of like the deepest conversations in the yeah. country? Like, how did that happen? So, I definitely respect that. And I think it's cool. And he, Rogan is one of those people who just kind of came out of nowhere. Like no one helped him. Mm -hmm. You know and what I mean? Was doing, he was doing the thing that he loves doing and it somehow keeps accidentally uh, being exceptionally successful. Yeah, and he's curious. Yeah. So that that's like the main thing. And there was a guy, without getting boring, but there was a guy I worked with years ago who like kind of dominated cable news, Larry King. And everyone would always beat up on Larry King for being dumb. Well, I got to know Larry King well, and I was his fill-in host for a while. And Larry King was just intensely curious. He'd be like, why do you wear a black tie, Lex? He'd be like, because I like black tie. Why do you like black tie? No, no, everyone else wears a striped tie, but you wear a black one, why? And he would like, he was like really interested. Yeah, genuinely so, yeah. Totally. And and I want to be like that. I don't want to think I know everything. That's, that's so boorish and also false. You don't know everything. But I see that in Rogan. Mm -hmm. Rogan's like, rah, how does 100%. that work? And people will... And it's so funny how that's threatening to people. It's like Rogan will just sit there while someone else is, you know, free balling on some far out topic, which by the way, might be true, probably truer than the conventional explanation. People are like, I don't know, how can he stand that? You know, he had someone say the pyramids weren't built 3,000 years ago, but 8,000 years ago, and that's wrong. It's like, first of all, how do you know when the pyramids were built? Second, why do you care if someone disagrees with you? Like, what is that? This weird kind of like group think, it's, it's almost like, you know, fourth grade, there's always like some little girl in the front row who's like acting as the, you know, kind of the teacher's enforcer. Like whip around and be like, sit down. Didn't you hear what Mrs. Johnson said? Sit down. That's like the, you know, it's like the whole American media. How dare you ask that question? And Rogan just seems like completely on his own trip. Like yeah. he doesn't even hear it. He's like, yeah. well, really? When were the pyramids built? And I'm just yeah. like, oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah, curiosity, open-mindedness. Yes. But, uh, the thing I admire about him most, honestly, is uh, that he's a good father. He's a good husband. He's a good family man uh, for many years. And like that's his uh, place where he escapes from, from the world too. And that's it's just before. beautiful. Without that, man, you're destroyed. Yeah. If I had a wife who was interested at all in any way in what I did, I think I would have gone crazy by, by now. When we get home, we don't, she's like, how was your day? It was great. Oh, I'm so proud of you. That's the end of our conversation about what I do for a living. And that is such a wonderful and essential respite from, you said, how do I not become an asshole to the extent I haven't? I kind of have. But how do I have, how have I not been, you know, transformed into a totally insufferable megalomaniac who like checking his Twitter replies every day or every minute. Um, it's that, yeah, you gotta have the core of your life has to be solid and enduring and not just ephemeral and silly.